everybody. Today we're going to be working on the knife hand chop board break at home. So this particular technique is going to be a chop across our body to the neck level. And you will also be doing another board break, the forearm strike. So those of you out there that are brown belts, your requirement for your next test is to do a forearm strike with one hand and an outside chop with the other hand. So there's another video you can use to work on your elbow or forearm strike. In this video, we're going to be working on the chop. So make sure that you're practicing both hands with both techniques so you're ready to break anything on your test day. Now, on our forearm, or excuse me, on our chop today, we're going to be working on making sure that this part of our hand hits the middle of the board. So you're going to be positioning your hand, squeezing it tight to make sure these fingers aren't flying out here because as you hit the board, you want that part of your hand to hit the middle of the board first so that your fingers don't get injured. So you're going to squeeze your fingers tight, you're going to squeeze your thumb in tight, so you're having a nice chop. Now, we're going to get into a good front stance with the front knee bent and the back leg straight. And we're going to position our hand, our striking hand, as if I was almost tapping the ear on my opposite side of my head. So I'm going to twist it as I come around for the board break so that the palm will now be facing down when I hit the board and follow through, twisting the hips and the shoulders. So one more time, we're gonna get in a good front stance. We're gonna squeeze our fingers and our thumb tight, position our hand so it's on the opposite side of our head, facing, palm facing us, and then we're gonna come around, twisting it, and follow through. So one more time, this is called the Hansenau Paka Mukchigi. Hansenau for single knife hand, Paka coming across the body, Muk for neck and chigi for strike. So one more time, let's get into our horse, our front stance, positioning our hand and yeah! making sure that we're twisting all the way through that imaginary target. Now, if you have a friend or a family member who wants to hold a pillow, you're gonna make sure they hold that pillow out to the outside edge. So as I come around and I twist, that board would be right here and I follow through, twisting my body. So when we practice, we're gonna be twisting. You might even lose your balance just a little bit there when you come out of the turn. That's okay for board breaking because that shows us that we're following through. If we were doing kumse, it would be much more strict. However, for board breaking, the most important element is that you're following through. So don't practice like this and stop. That would be incorrect. You're gonna practice like this, twisting all the way through. Sometimes I tell the kids if you wanna make your body like a, like a, a Twizzler uh, uh, licorice or candy, you twist on a dime like that. So why don't you practice that 10 times on each side with a loud key up, and we'll see you in the next video.